short video on animal anatomy um, as an introduction to animating animals, creatures, quadrupeds. Um, and I'm starting here with some lovely drawings by the animation genius and legend Glenn Keane, who had, did a handout on The Lion King. So this is really back from my time on The Lion King back in 1992. Um, really basic stuff on how to approach animal anatomy um, from, a, from the basics. And, and um, <clears throat> these are obviously, uh, this particular quadruped is a dog. So it's Glenn really showing how to get squash and stretch into the body, how to how to develop simple shapes, um, how to get parallel shapes here in the in the uh, shoulders and the legs, folding um, uh, uh, folding kind of like a like a folding chair there. And he's got some notes on how to do things wrong, and then other notes on how to do things right. Uh, but of course. Um, there is a big difference between animating a dog versus, say, animating a horse versus animating a cat. And a lot of this has to do with the, the flexibility of the, cat, of the animal's spine. And basically, the, more, the, di big, the key difference with animals is between herbivores and carnivores. If you are a carnivore, chances are you have a very, very flexible spine. Think about a cheetah, for example. If you are a herbivore, in particular, if you eat grass, you're going to have a very, very big stomach and a very, very heavy, inflexible spine to hold that stomach so you can get enough nutrition out of something that is not inherently nutritious. Um, Glenn talks about <clears throat> three basic solid masses. You've got the chest, you've got the hips, and you've got the head. So that's that's a sort of way of thinking about this stuff with animation. Getting lots and lots of nice squash and stretch into your work um, <clears throat> dogs, obviously, with a very flexible spine. Horses and cows, as we've said, with a very, very inflexible spine. These are some sketches by um, <clears throat> my friend and colleague, Sidney Paggio, who's a very, very brilliant animator and also published author. <clears throat> and she is a bit of an expert on, on quadruped animation and uh, did these sketches of cats with a very, very super flexible spine. If you think about a cat being dropped from a, from a height, obviously I don't recommend you do this, but cats can spin themselves round, they can twist their spine so that they can land on all fours. Cats very, very, very flexible. So you're always, when you're animating quadrupeds, or animals and creatures generally, you're always thinking about the actual underlying anatomy, the actual skeletal structure of the animal. And it can get quite technical. I remember working on Underdog and later on Beverly Hills Chihuahua and Marmaduke when we did the animation for the lip sync at uh, Cinesite, we had to reproduce the muscular system of the dogs so that their, their facial animation would as closely as possible replicate the actual muscles being fired when the dogs talked. Obviously dogs don't talk, but the idea was to make, make them animate as if they could talk and make it as realistic and believable as possible. So here's some notes on cats. You can see here how the, the um, uh, the spine attaches to the rib cage where you've got a general lack of flexibility but here where this where the spine attaches to um, the stomach you've got much more flexibility there so that's why you get that classic shape of the cat as viewed from the back here these notes very much like Glenn's you know big big shape for the for the um, for the three big shapes shoulders chest and um, and hips um, comparative anatomy again, you know, something like a rabbit, very, very flexible spine, but a cow, very, very inflexible spine. And of course, I mean, and the reason that, as we've said, is because cows eat grass. Grass is very, very low in nutrients. That means you need a really, really big stomach in order to get the nutrition out of that. So spine tends not to move very much. Um, Glenn recommends we keep the shape simple. I would um, strongly agree. Um, and of course, uh, as we've as we've said before, you want to try and keep those shapes uh, moving more or less in parallel. So you've got a right way of doing it on the left, and then a wrong way of doing it on the right. Um, <clears throat> Sydney likes to talk about an animal's body as being kind of like a bean. This is more something for drawing animation, perhaps for them for three D, but it's a useful way of thinking about animal anatomy when you're animating. Um, should always um, think about how the muscles work. We want to be as technically accurate as we possibly can. With and most animation rigs 
will attempt as far as they can to reproduce the actual skeletal structure um, and indeed, if we're doing um, muscles, muscle systems as well, the muscular structure of um, the animals and creatures. Cats, as we've said, very, very flexible. Um, big quadrupeds like um, cows and horses, much less flexible, although horses do have more flexibility in them than cows. Here's a drawing from Underdog, which, uh, as I've said before, I worked on, where we, where we did make really strenuous efforts to reproduce the actual... Uh, muscular system of the dogs and when we built the um, these facial rigs the blend shapes were all named properly according to the actual medical terms for these individual muscles and then we had blend shapes that combined the muscles in different ways so that uh, you could you could fire these muscles together in order to create the actual blend shapes that um, we needed to make the dogs talk there's another um, slide showing more or less uh, the same thing. Um, so that's the end of uh, a general introduction to animal anatomy. Obviously, an every animal is different. And when you do animate quadrupeds or, or indeed any other kind of animal, you want to look closely at the skeletal structure um, in order to understand uh, the, the, the sort of the fundamentals of how that animal looks and moves. And always, of course, be comparing your own animation to live action to make sure that you're not creating ugly shapes with the rigs that don't map closely onto um, the actual animal, the, the, the real animal itself. Especially if you're doing photoreal animation for visual effects. Uh, it's obviously, if you're doing cartoony work, it's much more flexible, but you've still got to have an eye on how the actual animal um, is built and structured. So that's the end of a general introduction to the idea of animal anatomy for animators.